Well, good Thursday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here and let's wake up the football gods. Are you ready? Are you ready? Because today, 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 I feel like Ryan Fitzpatrick in that DraftKings uh, commercial where he's just kind of like, <laughs> you know, it's the football season is here. It is here today, 10 hours, 21 minutes and 33 seconds from now. And it's Thirsty Thursday and we take on the New York stinking Giants. Wow. On Sunday can't wait full slate of games we've got the commanders versus the cardinals at one o'clock as an appetizer just a little taste just a taste you know a taste and then at four o'clock we got the die eagles die trying to win the nfc again back to back years going against the new england patriots another little taste taste and then, of course, we know. We know what's up. We know what's up. The Dallas Cowboys versus the New York Giants. Mm, let's get ready to rumble. Yes. All of the off-season maneuvering, all of the off-season work, all of the OTAs, the training camp, all of this stuff, all of the Jerry Jones's Jerryisms, the Catboy Capisms, all that stuff, all of the work begins the quest for a bigger one of these. 32 teams will enter. Only one, when the dust settles, will be holding that up. Is this the year for the Dallas Cowboys to get back to the top? Those will be answered over the course of the next 22 weeks. No more Sundays without football except for the week before the Super Bowl. I, 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 just, I, I just feel great. I could cry. But tonight, we have the Kansas City Chiefs going against the Detroit Lions. Another little taste, taste of football. Travis Kelsick is doubtful for the game tonight. Chris Jones, he ain't signed Jack. Been offered three years, 75 million. Of course, Bosa got five years, 170 million. So if you're Chris Jones, who shout out to Chris Jones for keeping his commitment to the charity event where he was serving McDonald's burgers at Ronald McDonald House. You look at, they offered me 24 and a half. Nick Bosa got, you know, 10 more than that per year. Are you crazy or just plain stupid? So that doesn't seem to be having any change in that effect. And it may be that Kansas City does, in fact, have to trade him. Now, the Cowboys on our end of the, of, of the spectrum currently have seven and a half, excuse me, $7.7 .7 million. They can get more and they would be wise to go ahead and do Dak Prescott's deal sooner than later. Rumors are that Joe Burrow's deal will be signed before the kickoff of the season on Sunday. And if it is, you're going to look at the quarterback money going up even higher again. Cowboys, what are you waiting for? Cat boy, you know I love you. You know, Brian Green doesn't like you too much. He says you got one job. You got one job left to do. Get us the cap relief with Dak Prescott. We've been here before. We made the mistake before, which cost us because you waited. We keep waiting. These guys keep getting paid. The numbers keep going up. Get it done. Get that extra cap room. And if there's a guy out there, Chris Jones, out there who can help 
get you closer to a guarantee of being that team, you need to do it. You need to do it. You know you have to do it, so why wait to do what is inevitable? I want to go through because today is not about the Cowboys. Today is about football being back. That and getting this place together for football being back because it's been <laughs> really since last off season since we've been really getting this place together. Shout out to Michael Anthony Fitness Reaction Gig Economy Electrician Extraordinaire who's already working on the place right now. Because yeah, so I've got it. Yeah, and and I've got I've got to get a, I got to get another TV because I took one down to Waynesboro and we got. Well, okay, we'll we'll get that squared away. Anyway, be that as it may, we are going to check out what they have on Get Up this morning. Tell us what I, I think is overwhelmingly obvious, right? I mean, the game is well, Thursday. Chris Jones is not playing. It would right? be, I, I, I mean, look, could he show up today, sign the contract, get a few snaps on Thursday night? Theoretically, yes. Realistically, no. I, I think they're, they're game planning without him. They're going to have to try and figure out how to stop the Lions without him. And it's going to be difficult. There, there is concern there, right? I mean, he is the key to the pass rush. Anything they get off the edge has been, has been tied to his ability to get, you know, to generate pressure from the inside. As Orlovsky said, anything they do on the back end is tied to his ability to generate pressure on the inside. He is their most important player on defense, and without him, they are much weaker, and they know it. And so the a whole upset alert thing comes into focus here. As a defensive player who played right in the middle of all of that, can you explain? You know, some people might be thinking, oh, he's a defensive tackle. That, that might be the second most important position on the field in the modern NFL. How significant is that absence? It's extremely significant because not only is he a war daddy when you talk about what he does against the run, he's a guy that they use as a chess piece. Remember early on, they had him strictly at defensive end last mm -hmm. year. He struggled for a second. They start moving him around to the matchups. Listen, it's already going to be tough sledding because I think that he's going against a, a top two offensive line within the, in, in the NFL to begin with. And now this is an opportunity for the Lions to play keep away from Patrick Mahomes. The best defense against Patrick Mahomes is keeping him on the sideline. And if you can sustain drives, you can win the time of possession. It continues to add more pressure on uh, Mahomes to continue to score and try and keep pace. You know, I know they, they won't have Williamson, but they, they still are a potent offense that, you know, ended the season hotter than anybody in football from the offensive standpoint. Let me ask my general manager here, Mike, how is this the case? I'm at the beginning of camp, I remember – all of the reports, oh, they're very optimistic. They will work something out with Chris Jones, et cetera. And now here we are two days before the opener. How, how does it get to this? Yeah, Greedy, I don't want to sound unsportsmanlike here, but Kansas City made a big mistake here. You know, a year ago when you let Tyreek Hill graduate to Miami, it's because Chris Jones is a have-to-have, -have, and have-to-haves have to be there. And you know what Aaron Donald's making. You know what Quinn and Williams is making. This is a have-to-have, -have, and it has to be done right away. As Bart alluded to, Chris Jones is a dominant player. Their defense, as we have a graphic, shows how much better Chris Jones makes this Kansas City Chief defense. As you can see here, they, they are materially better wow. with him. So how the, the front office doesn't have this deal is just surprising me. You made this decision a year ago, and by now he should be in camp. No one loves a graphic like Tannenbaum loves a graphic. But let me just underline what you just said. You're saying Tyreek Hill who I think most football fans would say, oh, he's one of the most, well, he is obviously one of the most dynamic and outstanding right. players in the NFL. He's not as critical a piece if you're building a team as Chris Jones is. That's right. If the four of us were running the Kansas City Chiefs, we would say, hey, we got Patrick Mahomes. We're going to manufacture Valdez Scanley, Sky Moore. We're going to draft Rasheed Rice. Chris Jones is a guy that you right. just can't find. And as Bart laid out and that graphic shows, they are dominant with Chris Jones on the field. And without mm -hmm. him, they're average. And, and as a linebacker, you talk about, <laughs> already being able to have single blocks so that puts a hat on a hat and then mm -hmm. that allows the lineman to get up to the second level which affects my job as a linebacker which means there's going to be huge gaps and gashes when you talk wow. about running the football he Here was double teamed 470 plays in 22 last year. That, yeah, that's which a was lot almost a playoff game it felt they were out of the playoffs but it felt like it mattered to them that much. It was primetime Lambeau Field, last game of the year. And they had the opportunity. They were knocked out of the playoffs because of results earlier in the day. They had a chance to knock out the Packers by beating. And I remember talking to the players on that team before that game. And they were so fired up. Because they kept saying, we don't get primetime games. Like, the Lions are not a pr they, they, we, we they are don't. proud of what we're doing here. We want to show everybody. We want to get more primetime games. And yeah. lo and behold, they get the very next one. 
They are going to be very hungry and very excited coming into this game. They can score. I think they could, this is saying a lot, but I think they're one of the teams in the league that can, that can score with the Chiefs uh, in a given game. Uh, defensively, they were very bad last year. They worked on it. A lot of improvement. Ideally, they'll be better there, but, you know, it's important to note that, that Chris Jones isn't going to be playing for them on Thursday night either. <laughs> this could be a shootout, uh, but I think that the point is the Lions are prepared for a shootout, and they feel good about Kansas it. Kansas City's a six-and-a-half-point favorite. Do you like the Lions to win this game straight up? I'm bold on the Lions, and I was bold before Chris Jones wasn't there. With Chris Jones there, I think they have more ways to win the football game when you consider the fact that they'll be able to matriculate the ball down the field and understand that they have the offensive line that can you know, slow the game down. But if Kansas City falls behind, they don't have the defense to, to, to kind of slow the Lions down, mm -hmm. and it means Patrick Mahomes has to be magical. Now, we're accustomed to seeing that, but when Kansas City goes down, it's usually early in the season that they get their new identity every year. But one way or another, that timing means maybe he's not on the field. It's possible. For their opener against the Steelers this week. And when you compare him to T.J. Uh, Watt, there's another similarity, I think. Yeah. Most contenders in the NFL, we say the one guy they can't lose is the quarterback, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, almost every contender in the league. There are two teams that I think it's the other side. If we, cons if we consider Pittsburgh a contender, which I sort of do, mm -hmm. I think T.J. Watt is the player they can't afford to lose. Yeah. And in San Francisco, this is their best player. I mean, if they don't have Nick Bosa, what does it mean for Sunday? Well, he sets the table, right? So he sets the table. He also is a guy who puts pressure and allows the opposite defensive end to be able to flourish because he's going to get the one-on-one. -on -one. So when you know you have a dominant pass rusher to one side, you know you can blitz the opposite side and change the math because you're going to predict that the help is going to be leaning towards him. It's like almost having Revis. It's like having Deion Sanders. Oh, okay, we can end it right there. So he signed his deal, and he's done. So there we have it, guys. There we have it. We have a feast. We'll be live streaming the game tonight here from Joe Boo Sports Report. And um, hopefully everything will be good. I'm Mark Holmes, and I appreciate you. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report.